Yeah. Welcome to CrossFit Karambi. Today we are going to vlog and actually film a video I wanted to do for a very long time. We are going to compare the Red Komodo and the Sony S7S3 which are both really good cameras that I love and they both have their strength and their weaknesses. Today we are filming with the Red Komodo, the Stormtrooper version with a Canon 24-270 2.8 and we are going to film some B-roll footage in 6K at 40 frames per second and uh, hopefully it's going to look good. And of course, Nelson is behind the camera helping me this morning, what a legend. You! <laughs> what I didn't tell you is like bringing him here like to try to convince him to join the gym because Nelson is an absolute beast when it comes to CrossFit, so... <laughs> <laughs> it hopefully, hopefully it works, we'll see, like probably in the next video will be him training here. Let's do it. You're gonna have fun watching. <laughs> guys I hope you like the intro one thing i need to note is that the footage was color graded by me and i went quite heavy on the colors just so that you can see how much you can push the footage on the komodo this video is a continuation of my previous talking about the basics of the red komodo in this one we are going to compare two amazing cameras the sony s7s3 and the red komodo and put them on the battlefield okay so i know you guys are busy so i'm going to give you who is the winner and in my opinion, the Red Komodo has a much richer and more organic image. On top of this, the global shutter really makes the look of this camera very pleasing. The Sony look is maybe a bit more clean, but it's a little too digital, which makes it like character. But in the end, I love the Komodo as much as I love the Sony S7S3. Both cameras are some of the best tools I've ever used and they are some of the best cameras in 2021 for us filmmakers. I use both cameras all the time. My decision to pick one or the other follows these rules. If I want lots of flexibility, I have no crew, want to snap some pictures maybe, but still have amazing quality, I check the Sony S7S3 in my bag. Whereas when doing some storytelling work or commercial projects with the right budget, I take the Komodo. However, I'm not afraid to take the S3 on larger scale projects the same way that I take the Komodo on smaller projects to get that unique look. In short, I believe the Sony S7S3 is the perfect film traveler's camera for 2021, while the Komodo is the best entry level cinema camera for commercial projects of all sizes. Now let's get into to the comparison but first let's set some ground rules this is not a scientific review at all i don't pretend to do anything super scientific it's more so a real life experience of a filmmaker just trying the cameras in different case scenarios and sharing my experience with you guys however i try to be as fair as possible still in my capability by having both cameras rigged in a very similar way with regards to the lens i used a canon 24 to 70 2.8 for the commodity and the Sony G Master 24 to 70 2.8. For the ND filters, I had the Matebox from Polar Pro with the 225 VND on one side and the Polar Pro VND 225 on the other side. Both cameras were set to 5500 Kelvin, but I'll come back on this in a bit. Regarding the picture profile on the Komodo, I obviously used the R3D RAW IPP2. On the Sony, I used 10 bit 422 S-Log 3 footage. In regards of the post production and the light I use for the Komodo, this is the red eye contrast, very soft highlight roll-off that you can find on the red website. And for the Sony, I didn't use the Sony LUTs because I don't really like the look they give. I used the Phantom standard LUT from Joel Famularo. They give a very cinematic look to the Sony. Finally, the Komodo was on the 1.5 beta firmware, which was the latest, and the Sony A7S3 2.0. And I could have made 
made this comparison even more fair by using an external recorder on the Sony S7S III to enable raw recording. Unfortunately, I don't own such a monitor. And my comparison is more about if you acquire each of these camera straight out of the box, put a lens on it and a battery, what can you achieve? Obviously, both cameras are very different. And when filming the test, I tried my best to match exposures. Other than that, all the footage you are going to see hasn't been adjusted, stabilized or color graded other than the Rec 709 LUT. However, I did adjust the white balance in post on the Red Komodo as I found out that the color balance was a bit warmer than the Sony. Keep in mind that in this test, the Sony S7S III is a full frame camera using a full frame lens filming in 16 by 9, while the Komodo is a Super 35 sensor using a full frame lens and filming in 17 by 9. The Red Komodo has a 19% crop compared to the Sony. On top of this, I conform the Komodo footage to match the timeline which is in 16 by 9 for YouTube. This emphasizes even more the crop. So what do we have here? <laughs> it's a homemade dual cam <laughs> setup. So they're both strapped together. Got the Komodo on one side, the S3 on the other side. I even have a phone mount if we want to compare that with the iPhone 12. Where phone. would you put the iPhone? Oh, here. Oh, on, the red, on the red mount. <laughs> Just let's give it a go. Yeah. Let's get into it. First of all, I'd like to thank my friend Nelson for coming and be a stuntman for this test. In this first test, we are going to have the Komodo in 6K24 and the S7S3 in 4K24. I just wanted to look at the image feeling and the quality. In that second test, uh, we are still filming in 6K24 with the Komodo and 4K24 on the S7S3. We are going to turn on stabilization. On that third test, I wanted to show you the rolling shutter. For this test, I had Nelson riding as fast as he could in front of a pole. To be honest with you, after watching the results, I'm now wondering if that pole was actually straight because even the footage on the Komodo shows that there is some kind of bending and this goes totally against what Global Shutter is. On the other hand, the Sony S7S3 is pretty impressive as it looks like there is no rolling shutter in comparison. In this test, we are going to look at the dynamic range on both cameras. This is where I got pretty impressed. The dynamic range is the capability of the camera to be able to see highlights and shadows at the same time. Okay, I'm going to stop right there, guys. I didn't do a proper dynamic range test. I would have needed to be in a controlled environment, have a color checker, have a light meter, and expose each camera to the exact specs required for this kind of test. And now comes the test of the autofocus. And I was quite surprised, the Komodo being the first red camera with an actual autofocus. So each camera was set to center zone autofocus. Keep in mind that Sony S7S3 has some very advanced functions like face tracking and even will focus on the eye if possible. The Komodo doesn't have any of this. In this next test, I just wanted to put the iPhone in the mix. And keep in mind, if you're using the inbuilt camera app of the iPhone, the footage would be in HDR or some kind of HLG. In this next test, we push the frame rate for each camera. So maximum resolution and maximum frame rate. The Red Komodo is limited to 6K40, and this is a big downside, as I mentioned in my previous video. Whereas the Sony s 7 3 is capable of filming in 4K120, still in the same format. One thing I need to mention is that with the new 1.5 beta version of the Komodo, you can now record audio even in off-speed recording on a separate track, as well known as very speed if you ever used the DSMC2 camera. <laughs> I think it looks really damn good. Mm. It looks good it's with the uh, palm trees and stuff. I think, I think, yeah, it looks epic. I think that's a wrap. Yeah. What, what do you think? I think we killed it. Yeah. Do we get we get different um, different settings with both cameras? What do you reckon from uh, what you can see so far? I'm pretty happy. I'm pretty surprised actually by the autofocus on the Komodo. Is it, do you reckon it's better overall? No, it's not better, but uh, it's much better than I thought. Okay. It's not better than I think. What about colors? 
I think the red will be will be the one will be in front. And Dynamic slow. range even just right now with you right there. That looks with so the nice. <laughs> what do you think Rafael? What do you think? An honest opinion. So hell paradise we are so lucky to you bro. Boom. Cheers bro. See you next time. A few more things I did compare are simple things like boot time. So the Commodo will take a bit longer than the Sony A7S III. Another question I receive quite often regarding the Commodo is the calibration process. Some people think you need to calibrate every time you film. In my experience, I don't calibrate every time. I only calibrate every time there is a big change of scenario. Let's say I'm in a cold environment and suddenly we move to a very warm environment. Then the sensor might need some calibration. Other than that, I don't worry too much. The calibration process takes around 10 minutes. As I mentioned in my previous video, raw footage can be really useful because if you messed up the setting, let's say you messed up your white balance, you could recover your footage entirely. Whereas with the Sony A7S III, there is very little chance you can recover if you were on one of those extremes. Another thing I need to mention is the ease of use. And in this regard, the Commodo is actually easier to use, in my opinion, than the Sony A7S III. The menu system, everything is very instinctive. Whereas with the Sony A7S III, even though they improved quite a lot the menu system in this camera from the previous Sony Alphas, it's still a bit tricky to get where you want and to know exactly what setting to use. When it comes to Wi-Fi control, both cameras can be controlled via Wi-Fi. However, the Commodo gets the win on that one because you can control entirely the camera from just the app. Whereas with the Sony and the Imaging Edge app, you get some limitations. I'm raising a bit harsh with the Sony S7S III Wi-Fi control over the app. You still have access to the main controls. However, you can't go and dig in the menus like you would with the Commodo. And that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions regarding that test, please leave them down below and if you want to see any other test let's say a red gemini versus a red komodo low light test i could do that i'm reading all the comments i'm answering all the comments and making my videos according to what you guys are asking for and i wanted to say thank you guys we are now 1000 strong on this channel and i'm super excited about the upcoming content so i see you very soon cheers